we are in the middle of winter and we've seen some disturbing news about how respiratory illnesses are on the rise and a concern across the United States. It's an issue globally as well. Is it the common cold? Is it the flu? Is it COVID? Today, we're going to dig into what is happening right now and what you need to know as a cleaning professional. I welcome Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, the Senior Director of GBAC. Gavin, welcome. Thanks, Jeff. Also, we have with us Steve Earhart, the Senior Director of Operations with GBAC. Steve, glad to have you. Thank you, Jeff. Great to be here. And last but not least, Dr. Rula abdel Masi, the Director of Product Development with ISSA. Rula, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jeff. I'm happy to be here. Great topic. Well, maybe not so great when we think about what it's doing to people, but an important topic to get into today. So, Gavin, we're going to start with you. What are you seeing right now and what should we know and focus on? Well, as you said, Jeff, it is the winter months. Therefore, every cleaning company, every cleaning professional should be really following their cleaning protocols and procedures now for the winter months. And they are different compared to, say, summer months. The new government data that's just been released by the U.S. Center for Disease Control, CDC, Jeff, showed that over that holiday week between Christmas and New Year, 38 states reported high to very high levels of respiratory illness. Now, we know, Jeff, that a sneeze can produce, gosh, 40,000 droplets of, of uh, and then that carries viruses and bacteria. We know that a cough can produce 3,000 droplets. So we're really focusing right now on air quality, uh, cleaning surfaces. Understand that viral transmission of these respiratory diseases that we're seeing, and these, these diseases that will be flu, respiratory syncytial virus, RSV, other winter viruses, as well as COVID-19, which is, is still out there, Jeff. Understand that viral transmission occurs by a close human to human, human contact, so when people crowd inside a room, or by contacting a contaminated surface. So just going back on those federal government uh, new data that was released, we've seen about 10 million illnesses since October, Jeff, 110,000 hospitalizations, 6,500 deaths just from flu. We've seen 27 children, unfortunately, die from flu, and the flu season doesn't peak until December, January, February. So we still have a lot of cleaning for health work to do, Jeff. Well, some disturbing numbers. Steve, let's go to you and just talk about what is GBAC doing in response to this. Can you share some information? Well, it starts with and has always started with education. Knowledge is power when it comes to these types of things. And it, when we're talking about our impact within facilities uh, in the workforce, having a complete workforce that is knowledgeable and understanding the risk of these respiratory diseases and how to mitigate those things, using the right tools and equipment and chemistries and knows, knowing how those function and, and work to kill viruses and bacteria, and then how to verify what you're doing is actually creating a healthier and safer indoor space. That has always been a, a real challenge that does require some you know, some extra steps and some extra process. So um, to that point, um, GBEC has worked with several ISSA member companies and several companies that have gone through the GBEC STAR Registered Program and Technology uh, Program that we just published uh, version two of our process verification and auditing guide. That is available for free on the GBEC website. And what that does is really help describe the how, um, the different types of verification that's available and how to use each one of these tools that, that aid you in that verification and that auditing that really serves to put a, a continuous improvement process in place in your facility. Beyond that, that provides a real nice springboard into the, the rest of education offerings, not only with GBAC, but within all of ISSA with the Infectious Disease Awareness course, our GBAC trained technician course, which gets into risk mitigation, chain of infection. Um, and then 
the course that we partnered with Allergy Standards Limited on the indoor air, or the, the healthy indoor air quality course, um, which is, as Gavin mentioned, the top of mind when it comes to respiratory infection. Well, knowledge is power, Steve, and thank you for what GBAC is doing. Can all of that information be found on the GBAC website? Is that the portal to start? Absolutely. Okay. Rula, let's go to you. You know, your background lends itself to a scientific comment. So what would you say to what we're seeing with these illnesses this winter? Yep. Thank you, Jeff. So in, in really looking at the trends of the respiratory illnesses this winter, um, there are several factors that really can contribute to the observed patterns. Uh, first, these respiratory viruses like the flu, the common cold, rhinoviruses, the RSV, and even COVID-19 infections tend to be higher during colder months. So one main reason is people spend up to 90% of their time indoors, especially during winter when it's cold, right? So where, where indoor air can be around two to five times more polluted than outdoor air. So if you want to mention more numbers here, um, there's some research, research that shows that during flu season, airborne influenza virus indoors can range from 30 to 60%, depending on factors such as ventilation and the presence of infect infected individuals. Indoor surfaces may harbor even several hundred bacteria per square inch, again, affected by different factors. So this increased time indoors and often in kind of close proximity to people that might be sick, whether in, um, in at work, at home, in malls, and so on, creates a kind of environment which is conducive to the spread of respiratory viruses. Additionally, factors such as improved thermal insulation to reduce heat loss and limited ventilation in modern homes can contribute to the deterioration of indoor air quality, potentially adding to the prevalence of respiratory infections during colder months. Recent studies have also showed that, um, including research on nasal extracellular vesicles, which are like tiny uh, packages released by the nasal uh, mucous membrane and toll-like receptors, uh, highlight the impact of cold exposure on our immune system. If we want to say that simply, cold weather may reduce the effectiveness of our natural defenses against respiratory viruses. So cold weather can also improve some viral stability, increase shedding, and so on. So to sum that up, understanding the interplay between the environmental conditions, human behavior, and immune system dynamics is really essential when trying to make sense of the trends in respiratory illnesses. Well, I don't know about you guys, but while she was talking, I was buying my air ticket to go to my own private island. So scary, scary stuff, but important. Thank you, Rula, for that. Gavin, what type of facilities are most at risk? And what are your thoughts on how masks are again mandated by some areas? some facilities? Oh, I hope I'm allowed to say this, Jeff, but I think everyone. Um, right now, we're seeing very high levels of respiratory viruses, all the viruses. But I think the GBAC team really wants to emphasize to everyone that the determination, especially in these winter months, of your cleaning procedures, um, I think the biggest question we get is how often the frequency. So the determination of your clean procedures, uh, frequency, method, and process, everyone should be taking a risk-based approach. And as Steve said, you know, our GBAC Star program actually has uh, areas there to help you and facilitate that process of doing risk assessments, using checklists, job aids for cleaning for health indoors, focus on the indoor air quality and the surfaces. But when it really comes down to it, Jeff, of the key, the, probably the three key areas of doing a risk assessment um, for frequency um, is look at the probability of contamination, uh, heavily contaminated surfaces where people are coughing and sneezing and, and touching need to be cleaned more frequently. Uh, look at the vulnerability of the people within the, the, the indoor space. Not all of us are the same. Some of us uh, have underlying conditions. Some of us have asthma. Some of us have other other um, other situations such as allergies. So really, be very mindful of the people that use the the building that you're cleaning. Understand also that the potential for exposure to these germs, these pathogens that cause respiratory viruses, 
they we're not talking seconds, minutes, or hours, Jeff. They survive both in the air and on surfaces for days to weeks. And so it's really got to come down to do your risk assessment, identify frequency, method, and process, and ensure that every facility you're cleaning right now, you've identified the people responsible, you've done your risk assessment to do the frequency, you've got done your risk assessment to look at method, product, and process, and then you've had a way to communicate what those procedures are. It could be through video, through a paper document, through just a, having a team huddle, a meeting, but ensure that everyone right now is following the correct checklist, job aids, and, and processes to clean for health. Well, why, as, as we've already mentioned, people are spending much more time indoors during those winter months. Exactly. I love how the three of you as, as professionals sandwich the science with the practical. It, that's important because those watching this today, those that are our members, they need to know exactly what to do and the reasons to do that. So thank you for all you do. Rula, let's go to you next. I know uh, we've seen many winters. It seems that this type of news is typical. Winter brings the, the flu, colds, and more. And you commented on the reason why this is, but why so much focus this year? Yeah, that's true, Jeff. So while winter typically sees an increase in respiratory infections, um, the current focus is heightened due to the concurrent circulation of, of all of these together, of the flu, the common cold viruses, RSV and SARS-CoV-2. Um, I focused on Michigan because I, I live here and, and we saw a kind of surge this December uh, in, in the numbers. So one thing to consider is after navigating a period dominated by uh, COVID-19 during the pandemic, individuals might now be more susceptible to the flu, uh, considering the potential waning of uh, immunity. This further emphasizes the importance of preventive measures and tailored strategies and highlights the crucial role that you, Jeff, and the media are doing in public awareness and education. This is really very, very important. So prevention is the key, correct? So there are different things that we all need to do as a team uh, that we're doing at ISSA, at GBAC, uh, all of us together. So vaccination campaigns really play a pivotal role in mitigating the impact, particularly in reducing severe outcomes and preventing co-infections. In a recent advisory, the, CDS, the CDC sorry, alerted healthcare professionals to low vaccination rates this season against the, the flu, COVID-19, and RSV. Um, so, so that's something uh, very important to kind of uh, to kind of be careful to. Another thing, indoor air quality interventions are important uh, due to the potential for airborne transmission of respiratory pathogens in enclosed environments. Uh, another thing to kind of, and, and Gavin kind of touched upon that point, is to highlight the importance of the cleaning industry. It has a major role in public protection, uh, promoting proper hygiene practices, ventilation, the use of um, filters, air purifiers, and so on. So it's a combination of different things that uh, we need to kind of work on. The, co the coexistence of all these viruses emphasizes the importance of really maintaining a robust public health infrastructure to mitigate the impact on individuals and the healthcare systems. Uh, I would end really by saying that scientific scrutiny is really required to understand all these complex interactions and transmission dynamics of these respiratory viruses uh, during this uh, really winter season. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Steve, I wanna go to you next and talk about building confidence and building occupants because when, when, we have, when buildings are being cleaned and they're safe and healthy, does everyone know about that? You know, that's important to, to bring people to the office, to make them feel good about being there. Can you comment on the ongoing importance of accreditation and certification and how that will help contractors and facility managers? Sure, Jeff. The, our GBAC Star accreditation since 2020 has been able to serve over 4,000 facilities worldwide. Uh, and, and really what this provides outward facing or public facing um, is that assurance that What's happening inside of this building or inside this organization is rooted in a place that of, of risk mitigation, education, to, to truly create a cleaner and safer space for people not only to work in, but for people um, to visit as guests or visitors um, and other sort of occupants, whether that be a hotel or a stadium 
or a convention center or an airport. And, and really this accreditation is still built on, on the same principles of education, continuous improvement, well-written standard operating procedures and process verification. Um, what we've done over this past few months with the GVAC STAR accreditation is really fine tune how this is presented to a facility to be able to, to digest some of this information and really put a strong program in place that can withstand fluctuations in workforce, in the labor force, um, to, to have people plug and play when they come in to understand that this cleaning operation isn't just for appearance. It's not just to make it smell nice. It truly is to help create a safer, healthier indoor space. Um, and one of the big challenges with, with a lot of facilities is cooperation from a building service contractor, understanding how to work in harmony with them, how to understand what to request of them when it's time to write a contract uh, for a building service contractor. So ISSA has a longstanding program in, in the SIM certification for building service contractors. And in 2022 and 2023, we took everything from our GBAC facility accreditation that is firmly educating on the infection prevention aspects of cleaning and incorporated that more into the SIMS product that was already there. So having a facility that is accredited, GBAC star accredited, and if you have a building service contractor, putting that in your contract that you're gonna require that um, really makes for a harmonious and safer and healthier indoor space because everyone's on the same page. Everyone is understanding uh, who's doing what. Everyone understands how to follow a well-written standard operating procedure and how to verify. You know, that that's a, such a huge aspect of this is holding people accountable to do this because other people's safety and health are reliant on this, this procedure and this these frontline workers that do this important work and so having these two things in harmony um or just gbac star if you are or if you do your cleaning in-house it's that education it's that buy-in top to bottom in a facility um to to really create this this ecosystem within those four walls uh where people can really have that confidence. Yeah, we're really focused here at ISSA and again, through our GBAC STAR program to help everyone be more data-driven, to focus on scientific principles, to focus on evidence, to ensure that what you're doing in the many buildings that you clean actually works. There's a return on investment. And I think the one key area that we have to ensure everyone understands for this winter season, the season that runs from like October to March every year, we see high levels of respiratory virus. Yes, we have flu. Yes, we have RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. We have other viruses, but we also, Jeff, right now have a new version of the coronavirus called JN1. We now know that from data, hospital data, that JN1 is accounting for about, gosh, doing two thirds of all the US cases of uh, COVID-19 right now. And the other thing that we're seeing right now, Jeff, is that this JN1 variant is causing the second largest number of cases if we consider that the uh, Omicron variant of COVID-19 was the highest. So we're really going through another wave of COVID infection, as well as flu, as well as RSV, as well as other respiratory viruses. So just to emphasize, one, we are here to help. If you are looking at your protocols right now, you're looking at your processes, your procedures, your frequency. If you're looking at the cleaning products you're using and you want some help from us, reach out to ISSA, reach out to GBAC so we can give you some feedback on how to maybe improve and do better.